Welcome to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International. We are an apostolic, prayer, healing, deliverance, and prophetic global ministry. And our overseers are Apostle and Prophets Dr. Kilafo Z. Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. Our ministry is built on the apostolic and prophetic model, and the foundation of our ministry is Jesus Christ and His Kingdom. Located in Freeport, Grand Bahama, Bahamas, the ministry celebrates 10 years of dedicated service. Parenthetically, our leaders also oversee Kingdom Apostolic Global Networks and have commissioned over 800 apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in over 30 nations, including South, East, and West Africa, Asia, USA, Bahamas, and the Caribbean. Visit us at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Let's go straight into the broadcast. Welcome to another Kingdom broadcast brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International and Apostle Dr. Kilafo Z. Kali and yours truly, Prophet Shalee Wakali. It is truly a pleasure to have you join us today and fellowship with us, taking this time out of your busy schedule to hear what the Lord has imparted upon us uh, for you today. We just want to bless God for you, and we just want to say our ministry now is talking about the foundation. This series is about the, the foundation of the kingdom. Amen. We not only want to teach the kingdom, but we want to stir up that gift in within you. We want to stir up that passion within you for you to have a personal relationship with Christ. It is not about impressing this one and that one or looking and uh, criticizing what this one does from what that one does. It's not about that anymore. It's about having a personal relationship with Christ for yourself. So we, we thank you once again for joining us and we ask you to stay tuned and to be blessed in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 5 and 8, write this. Thou shalt not make any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them nor serve them. For I am the Lord thy God. I am a jealous God. What he said, don't make nothing that looks what is in heaven. Don't make any image of it. Deuteronomy, because heaven is real. He knew that. Deuteronomy 10 and 14, we're still looking at heaven, the beautiful place that we aspire to, and that must come to the earth. Deuteronomy 10, 14, move quickly. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's thy God. The earth also, with all that therein is, the earth is the Lord, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Hallelujah. You see that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David picked that up and carried that same understanding that the Lord is Lord of heaven and he is the Lord of the earth. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what's happening in the earth. The Lord owns the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. Hallelujah. And we will see something here that the heavens belong to him. Watch this now. 2 Samuel 22 and 14 says, The Lord thundereth from heaven. Hallelujah. You can read that later on. Let's turn now to Psalm 113. Verse 4, the book of Psalm 113, verse 4. What does it say? The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high. Where does the Lord dwell? In heaven. The Lord dwells in heaven. When Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, he was on the Mount of Olives. He showed himself to, hallelujah, his disciples. And he said, I am leaving now. Go ye therefore in all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Discipling them, teaching them, and making disciples of all nations. And he went up in the cloud. The Bible talks about the cloud. It means with the angels into where? Heaven. The Bible says in the book of Hebrew, the Lord Jesus Christ is seated in heaven. His throne is in the heavens. He rules from heaven. He's making intercessions from where? Heaven. What am I saying? The Lord never you lose or lost power of heaven. Write that down. The Lord never lost power 
or authority in heaven. He's still ruling and reigning in heaven all throughout eternity. Okay? Now, turn your Bibles back to Revelation chapter 4. Are you with me? Amen. Now, this is a, a two or three part teaching, so stick with me because you're going to get all this. You listening what audience and viewers and you here this day. Back to Revelation chapter 4. Verses 1, after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. We talked about heaven. I showed you some Old Testament examples of heaven just now. Amen? Amen. Now, the Greek term for heaven, are y'all with us this morning? Amen. Amen. The Greek term, when I study the Greek word for heaven in the New Testament, it comes from the word thronos. Write that down. T-H-R-O-N-O-S. Thronos. T-H-R-O-N-O-S. What does that mean? Heaven. Kingly power. Or kingly power bench. A judge. A tribunal. Another word for the throne. Throne. Sorry. Throne. This is a word for throne. A chair of state having a footstool. Assigned to kings. Kingly power and royalty. So this talks about the Lord seated upon his throne in verse Revelation chapter 4 verse 2. Read that. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne. Okay? So that throne is kingly power, a bench assigned to kings, royalty and royal power. power. So when we talk about the heaven, this is where God sits and rules in authority from. We're talking about the foundation of the kingdom. This is where God sits and rules from. This is where he governs from. This is where he dwells. In his eternal body. Now, you're right. If you're asking, but God lives everywhere. Yes, he does. His Holy Spirit lives everywhere. Yeah. And wherever, another point about the throne of God, wherever he is allowed in, that's where he comes and dwells. How do I know that? The Bible says, the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Say it. The Lord, the Lord inhabits, inhabits the praises, the praises of, his people. of his people. Amen. It means God sets a throne, sits upon and dwells wherever praise and worship is going on. Another place is when you ask Jesus Christ into your heart, he comes and sits and dwells. On the table of your heart. He comes and dwells in your spirit. And sits there and rules there. In churches that allow his Holy Spirit. To be welcomed like the day of Pentecost. When they were worshipping all on one accord. The Holy Spirit came down like a dove. And like a flame of fire. And sat upon each one of them. That's where his kingdom was. He began to sit on them. In a tangible way. Hallelujah. So the throne of God eternally from beginning now and into the future is in heaven. He never lost control of heaven. He never lost control of heaven. He rules in heaven. He reigns in heaven. His power flows from heaven. His anointing flows from heaven. When we pray, the Bible says our prayers and our worship is taken up to heaven and it's poured before the Lord. Amen. Jesus is seated on the right hand of the Father in heaven, making intercessions, petitioning for us, Amen. begging for us, pleading for Amen. us. He's seated there with his eternal body that has passing in his hands and his side and in his feet. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I'm going somewhere. Now, 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 now. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Uh, I have to answer a question that you were all thinking of. And I hope you you were. Turn now, keep your pen on your marking in Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. Now turn over to Revelation chapter 12. Uh, uh, and, and we're going to dive into this quickly. Revelation chapter 12. A beautiful book, Revelation it is. Amen? Now, this chapter deals with the war that took place in heaven. Amen? Okay, are you with me? Do you know there was a war in heaven? Yes. 
Okay? So eternally, the Lord was on his throne. But there was a little war that took just a few blinks of a second that ended. It was a little war where an angel there called Lucifer previously, now known as Satan the devil, was in heaven and he saw this beauty of the throne of God. Kedabasha, hallelujah, glory to God. I feel the spirit of the living God in here this morning. Lucifer saw the throne of God. He saw the glory and the splendor, the beauty, the magnificence of the glory of God. And he wanted it. He didn't want to be like God and respect him. He said, I will establish my throne above the throne of God. Lucifer was beautiful. He had, as we saw in the book of Ezekiel, beautiful stones in his body, pipes in his body that made music. He was the covering angel. He he was a high-ranking angel. He was in charge of many other angels. And he brought the worship of God in the heavens Amen. with his body. And one day he saw the throne, the government, the rulership, and the kingdom of heaven and all its beauty. And he wanted that. He got jealous. One of the earliest sins is jealousy. Oh, you got to watch out for jealousy. Jealousy got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. He didn't want to be like God. He wanted God's things. He wanted God's worship in heaven. He wanted God's praise. He wanted God's uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Throne. He wanted God's angels. He wanted God's reverence and honor and position. And he got jealousy in his heart. Then the next thing, he got pride. Now, whichever one comes for it, maybe it was pride, then jealousy came after it. They go hand in hand. He got pride and said, I'm going to be above God. Then thirdly, he got into rebellion. He was able to rebel. And then fourthly, he, took, he did manipulation. He was able to manipulate and deceive. Fifthly, deception. A third of the angels. Let's read it. Revelation 12, 1 to the end. You could read all of it later. I'll just highlight a few verses. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon on her feet. 12, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Verse 7, Revelation 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels, the Lord Jesus Christ didn't even find himself. He sent Michael to beat up Lucifer and the angels who are now Satan and demons. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to read verse 8 of Revelation 12. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. That means heaven has been totally rid of jealousy, envy, Anger, bitterness, murder, revolt, rebellion, deception, and overthrowing. Satan, who was Lucifer previously, has been kicked out with all his demon spirits. And so heaven is back to its beautiful, lovely, gorgeous, amazing, peaceful, loving, glorious presence of the Lord. you got to circle out in your Bible. Heaven. Heaven. And verse 9. Of Revelation 12. And the great dragon was cast out. Look at the names of Satan in this. Later on we're going to talk about the kingdom of uh, God. In relationship to the kingdom of darkness. You can't miss that. That's coming up. Amen. I'm going to be teaching on that. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan. Which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth. And his angels were cast out with him. Mm -hmm. Look at the names of him. Great dragon, mm -hmm. the old serpent, the devil, Satan. Four names for him. Underline them. Mm -hmm. the and deceiver. He deceived the whole world. Let's go now. After he was kicked out, look what happened. Returned. Revelation 12 and 10. And I heard, read. And I heard, everybody read. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, and the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, 
at the word of their testimonies, and they love not their lives unto the death. Amen. You can read the rest of the day later. Amen. When we, we overcome the Satan by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. A lot of people just say we overcome by the blood. It's not that. It says, and they overcame him who? Satan, the devil, the dragon, the deceiver. Well, you better apply the blood of Jesus. Let me put that as a side note. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Learn to apply the blood of Jesus to bring victory over Satan's kingdom. Mm. All right. Enough of him. I just wanted to let you know that there was a beautiful heaven. And all of a sudden, one of the workers wanted to revolt. The same Lucifer. But it was quickly handled and he was kicked out. And now the kingdom of heaven is back to its original state. Do you agree with me this morning? Yes. yes. Amen. You saw that this morning. Amen. So turn back to Revelation chapter 4. I'm talking about the uh, kingdom of heaven this morning. A glimpse of heaven. Amen. Subtitle. This is all going to make sense. Okay. Why is it going to make sense? Because Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness and all other things shall be what? Added unto you. Then Jesus also said, when you pray, in Matthew chapter 6, pray, our Father who art in where? Heaven. Our Father is in heaven. Now heaven is all these things we're looking at. His rule, his domain, his throne, his authority, and some other things you're going to look at there. It's important that you see this. So when you pray, you and I will pray now from heaven coming down to earth. If you don't understand what's going on in heaven, you can't pray the kingdom. You can't understand the kingdom. You can't believe in the kingdom. You can't understand the operation of the kingdom. You must understand what's going on in heaven first. To pray, let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On where? Earth as it is in heaven. Man, I pray that from a child. We pray it all around the world. Even sinners pray the Lord's Prayer, we call it. But they don't understand what they're saying. But today when you and I pray it, we're going to have an understanding of what we say. And the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is going to invade your life and mine. And it's going to break some things in your life and mine today in Jesus' name. Those Amen. who are listening and watching. Amen. And it's going to transform some things. Because we're going to be praying from a right position. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Clap your hands to the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. It's going to get us into the right position of prayer. It's going to bring us into the right position in Christ. Now, let's get to this done. I'm moving quickly. Revelation. Chapter 4. Verse 2. Let's read to the end. And immediately I was in the what? Spirit. And behold, a throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And watch this. And he that sat. Read this for me. Revelation 4 and 3. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sodden stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. In sight like unto an emerald. Stop there. Oh my goodness. Don't tell me you don't have a description of how Jesus looks. <laughs> this tells you how God looks in his glory. What? He that sat upon was to look upon like a jasper. This is a very precious stone. Beautiful. And a sodden stone. There was a rainbow round about the throne. In the sight like unto an emerald. You ever seen a beautiful big green emerald? All around his throne. This talks about the beauty and the wealth and the magnificence of the kingdom of heaven. All right? Don't tell me Jesus is poor and struggling. That's why the Bible says he became poor so that you and I may become what? Rich. This is what he left. Around his throne is a big emerald shining. He looks like a jasper and a stone. And the Bible talks about heaven. The roads paved with gold. The new heaven. The throne of God. That's coming down from heaven. Amen. Revelation 19 and 20. Beautiful city made with layers of diamond, gold, emerald, beryl, hallelujah, diamonds, pearls. When he came on the earth, those little things those shepherd and kings brought to him was a joke. He made gold and diamond, frankincense and myrrh. He left the beauty of heaven. And them little gifts he brought, well, he gave them to Mary and Joseph to take care of some things for him while on the earth. 
There was a change to him. He made it. So we're talking about this. This is the beauty of heaven. Now the next point we're looking at is the eldership and order of heaven. Revelation 4 and 4, and it says what? And round about the throne were 24, 4 and 20 seats. And upon the seats I saw 4 and 20 elders sitting, clothed in right raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. Watch this. This talks about the order. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. This talks about the order. Clap your hands to the Lord. Come on, come on, come on. In this place, look at this. Not only is heaven beautiful, it's order. Amen. You see that around his throne are the elders. The ones who get consoled from the Lord. Now, I don't know who they are. You'll find out when we get to heaven. Amen. But they sit around his presence in beautiful white robes and crowns. They're kings. They're royal elders. The order of God is beautiful. It doesn't make mention of their face or how they look, but we know there are 24 elders. Mm -hmm. Verse 5. Now you can ask the Lord or we can just wait till we get in heaven. Now I looked at the word crown. It talks about the word crown in the Greek New Testament, Stephanos, a mark of royalty and of or exalted rank. A wreath, a garland, one given usually as a victor in public games or our ornament and honor. This was something they sat and wore. How many know we're going to have our crowns one day? Amen. Hallelujah. If you endure to the end, you will be given the crown of life. Hallelujah. You're going to be given a crown of glory. If you overcome this life and live, hallelujah, in Jesus Christ, if you, hallelujah, preach the gospel and you give to the poor and you read your Bible and you maintain a loving relationship with Jesus Christ and you're faithful to your tithe and your offering and you help to build the gospel of Jesus Christ and evangelize this world and aside, hallelujah, our souls are saved. It's accounted to your reward. We ought to be busy about doing the work of God. Amen. 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 My God, if a crown don't motivate you, you might never get a crown and a beautiful robe while you're in this life. You might never go to Buckingham Palace and receive a reward. You might never go to the government and the governor's house or the mayor or the president or the prime minister's court. You might never get a reward from parliament or your nation. It's all right! Shout hallelujah! Hallelujah! i rather a reward from Jesus any day. Amen. i rather a crown of honor given to me for overcoming in this life. How about you? Amen. Hallelujah. Keep your eyes on the crown. Amen. Keep your eyes on your eternal reward. Amen. He's going to give you a robe and a brand new name and a sash and a ring and a crown and golden slippers and rulership with him Amen. in this beautiful place called heaven. Just take a minute and think about that. See yourself walking around heaven with a scepter of gold, crowned, a beautiful new body, free of disease and sickness and the hallelujah, pestilence, free from trouble in the presence of the beautiful presence and glory of God, where there's no need for sun, moon, light, for he is the light. And you will be there with the beautiful gardens and the wonderful rivers. Hallelujah. It's all here. That's how I know I see it now. With all the sights of heaven glory, Jesus. Yeah. Well, I want to see Jesus. Oh, yeah. In all his glory. Excuse me, somebody. I, I'm just thinking about heaven right now. I'm just seeing heaven in a vision. Oh, Jesus upon his throne. Oh, and the angels and the elders worshiping him. Which was and is. There will be no more pain. He will wipe the tear from my eye and yours. This old pain will be gone. Amen. This old suffering will be gone. This old trouble will be gone. And we'll be cheering with the other saints. Hallelujah. Waiting for them to close out the ages. Hallelujah. We'll be cheering on with the Lord to close out the age. And on that final day, 
when he shall sound a trumpet. Uh, if we are up with him already, uh, we coming on our white horses, uh, coming with him who sits upon the white horse, uh, who has on his vesture and on his thigh, King of kings and Lord of lords. Uh, and he's coming with the angels of heaven. Uh, and he's coming with his swords of fraud. Uh, and he's coming to destroy the wicked kings of the earth. Yes. He's coming to destroy uh, the nations that forsook him. He is coming uh, on Mount Zion. He is coming, hallelujah, on Mount Olives where he ascended. He said he's coming back that he will step, uh, hallelujah, on the mountains in Jerusalem. Uh, and he will make uh, Jerusalem his everlasting uh, earthly kingdom. He's going to bring all of the kingdom of heaven into this earth uh, and he shall rule forever and his angels shall bind up uh, those who rejected him uh, and they will be cast into the eternal lake of fire. Mm, God, they will be in a place where there's weeping and gnashing of feet uh, and they will be in a place of torment and burning uh, and Lucifer, that dragon, that old serpent uh, who got kicked out from the beginning. Uh, don't mind him showing his dirty skin off. Uh, that Lucifer of a, don't mind him deceiving uh, don't mind him pretending like he has power in the earth uh, don't mind him pretending like he's winning the battle he is a loser he is defeated uh, he is going to be chained up forever and he's going to be cast into the lake of fire by the angels of God hallelujah hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. every unclean spirit and I want to let you know many of them are being cast into hell already. Many of them are being sentenced to judgment in the pit. How do I know? Because when we cast demons out, we send them to the pit of hell. They are chained up and bound already. And as the church of Jesus Christ all around the world, drive them out of people and drive them into the pit and bind them up in spiritual warfare and prayer. Hallelujah. We're dragging them to the pit. They're going to be chained. They're going to be bound forever. They're going to be in a lake of fire that was prepared for them from the beginning, huh? from the time of their revolt. Huh? Hallelujah. That's why we are not to be afraid of the enemy. He is defeated. Huh? He is a lost demon. Huh? He is a lost devil. Huh? He is a defeated enemy. He is a defeated foe. Jesus huh? has written it huh? and he has written that heaven will invade earth. Shout hallelujah. Heaven will invade earth. Yes. I say heaven will invade earth. Yes. His kingdom is coming on heaven and in earth. He's prophesied it from the beginning to Deuteronomy and Psalm, the New Testament. Jesus said, pray thy kingdom come. It's just Amen. a matter of time. Yes. Jesus only said, you and I and the believers around the world must get into the kingdom by accepting Jesus as the king and the Lord of who he said he is. Amen. That's what salvation is. <clears throat> We call it the sinner's prayer, but really it is saying, Lord Jesus, I don't want to be in this kingdom of darkness with Satan. I don't want to be in darkness. I don't want to be in sin. I don't want to be in unrighteousness. I don't want to reject you, Lord Jesus Christ, as the true king. I want to receive you. Amen. Let heaven invade my life. Somebody say it this morning. Amen. Say, Lord, Lord, let heaven Amen. invade my mind. Invade my let heaven invade invade my life. Let heaven invade my family. Let heaven invade my children. Let heaven invade my city. Let heaven invade my nation. Let heaven invade my business. Let heaven invade my ministry. Let the kingdom of heaven invade the world. Let the kingdom of heaven invade the world. In Jesus' name. You were listening to Kingdom Come Now broadcast, brought to you by Kingdom Apostolic Ministries International, where the leaders are Apostle and Prophets, Dr. Kilafo Kali, MD, and Shalewa Kali. If this message was a blessing to you, or you would like to partner with us and make a donation, contact us at telephone 1-242-352-2130. 
or email us at kamgbahamas at gmail.com. Visit our website at www.kamgbahamas.com. We are located at Nios Grace Center, West Atlantic Drive, Freeport, Bahamas. Be blessed and join us again soon for another Kingdom Come Now broadcast.